We're just going to take a look at the pinstripe double knit mittens and look at a method for introducing the thumb into the mitten. Because we've got two layers of knitting, it's like putting two thumbs in at the same time. The first stage to making the opening is to prepare two waist yarn flaps. So this is six stitches wide, and so is this one, and they're two bits of stocking stitch. These are going to reform our replacement stitches. What we've got to do is make these into a double knit fabric. So we take a stitch from the front needle with the knit side facing us, one from the back needle with the purl side facing us, and just simply alternate the stitches onto a receiving needle. So I take the two layers and interlace them onto the one needle. I now have 12 stitches of stocking stitch, two different colours, and the stocking stitch side is facing us on both, both sides. I've also made sure that the near layer stitch is the first one on the needle, so I put the front stitch on first and the far stitch on second. I'm just going to work in double knitting to where I want to put the thumb, and I've got to get rid of the stitches that are going to be underneath the thumb. So at the moment I have my green in my right hand and I'm purling the green stitches. Take the green yarn out of the way whilst I knit the pink stitches. You can do double knitting with both yarns in the right hand, both yarns in the left hand. I happen to prefer it one yarn in each hand. I'm always just making sure that I'm keeping the non-working yarn out of the way on, on its proper side of the work so that the stitches don't get muddled up. I'm going to knit or work to where my thumb opening is going to be. Now I'm going to take a darning needle and a piece of spare yarn and reserve the thumb stitches. So let's get rid of eight pairs of stitches. So there's a pair, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pairs of stitches. I'm just going to pull that yarn through the stitches. If I felt nervous about it, I could tie it off, but they're not going to come off the needle. Having reserved the stitches on a thread, I'm now going to take my replacement stitches and hold them along with my left hand needle. So these are the stitches I'm now going to work instead of working the pink and green ones. So I'm going to slip the stitches near the beginning of the needle, set my yarn up for double knitting once again, and the turquoise stitches are going to replace the pink ones. So I'm going to knit into the turquoise ones, and I'm going to purl into the dark blue ones. I've tried to choose waist yarns that contrast with their respective sides. Avoid using a variegated yarn. It's bad enough that we've got four colours going on. Um, you don't want to mix a variegated yarn into it. Also, it's very important on this first row across the waist yarns that you don't work in any other kind of pattern, uh, such as the pinstripe mittens have a three by one stripe. Um, discontinue any pattern on this first row. Work one colour on one side and one on the other all the way across the waist yarns. We've got one more green stitch to go. And now we've replaced eight pairs, so 16 stitches, with 12 replacement stitches. So this would give us a thumb with a little bit of extra stitches underneath, like a thumb gusset, and allow us to knit up around it. Now I continue back in the round just as usual. And continue to complete the mitten all the way up to the tip of the mitten and then we'll come back and put a thumb on the other side of the swatch. I've already set in the waist yarn flaps and now we're going to open up to put the thumb in. So the first operation is to regain the stitches that we put on a thread. Now 
this is a very docile wool. I could probably just pull the piece of yarn out and the stitches would sit there. Whenever you're picking up double knit stitches you want to be very sure that you get the stitches in the correct order from both the sides and none of them are missing. Very easy to miss one off from the end. Always work in complete pairs if you can. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So that's the correct number, eight pairs of stitches. They're all alternating along the needle. So that's no problem, we can work in double knitting across that side. Now let's look at the other side. I've turned the swatch upside down and there are my two waist yarn flaps and my hole. Now if we have a look carefully at the junction between the waist yarn and the working yarn, we can see the heads of what will become the stitches in the opposite direction, what I also like to call the Australian cousins. So if I take a smaller needle and pick up, remember it's the pink stitches we're going for, these are upside down stitches. So if I just slip those onto my spare needle, this is finer than the working size needle and could be a lot finer than that. Now I'm going to cut away my waist yarn. But notice when we put the waist yarn in there, there were six stitches. There are only five cousins. That's exactly what you would expect. Now I'm going to pick away the flap of waist yarn from this side. unpick this because this is not this is the wrong end for unraveling we can't unravel it from the cast on end there are our five Australian cousins now we'll look on the other side of the flap for the green cousins one two three four five so you can see the importance of a really strong color contrast so the waist yarn must contrast with the stitches it's intersecting with and there are the five cousins and I'll now remove that flap. The far waist yarn flap is now gone. I've got two layers of stitches and now I've got to remount those back into double knitting format. Now I've got to be careful because I want my front stitches to be on the needle first. So near, far, near, far. Putting them onto a receiving needle. I'm still using the smaller needle at the moment so I must remember when I start working around this thumb to go to the gauge size needle. So I now have stitches top and bottom for my thumb and I'll be able to knit up some extra stitches at the sides to make the side of the thumb. Leaving a decent tail of yarn on both for both sides I've now knit across my regular direction stitches. These are the ones on the underside of the thumb hole and I've knit across six pairs. Now I'm introducing a second needle because I'm going to get this into a small round. I could do it on circulars. For now we'll use double points. So I'm just finishing off the last two pairs in double knitting. Now most thumbs require you to pick up a couple more stitches or knit up a couple more stitches at the side of the thumb. So I'm going to pick a spot here and so I'm going to work that in the pink, bring my pink yarn forward, then I'm going to find a spot where I want to purl up a stitch. So I'm going to put my needle in from, from the back and purl up a stitch and just make sure that they fall in double knit sequence. Pink, knit, purl, green. And then I can continue across the Australian Cousins. They don't look any different to regular direction stitches. And that's your thumb established. Complete the Cousins, pick up more stitches down that side, and off you go, working on your thumb. For much, much more on double knitting, check out my Double Knitting Delight DVD.